Well, the holidays are a time to gather with loved ones, and while it's said to be the most wonderful time of the year for some of our family members, the reality of the holidays isn't so cheerful. So to talk more about that, we have Dr. Elizabeth Mead from Swedish Medical Center, or really to offer more insight uh, this morning. How often, how common is this to uh, kind of go through depression, uh, sadness, especially for uh, our, our elderly people? It's a lot more common than people realize, I think especially around the holidays. So lots of studies have found that up to about a quarter, so one in four people feel this way at the holidays in particular, kind of lonely and depressed and just not that happy. And it's significantly higher in older people. Yeah. yeah. It, it, when, when you really think about it, it, it kind of doesn't sound like it's too surprising. I mean, mm -hmm. I would expect that there'd be some people who would be definitely depressed during the holidays. Yeah, I think there's multiple reasons why. I mean, I think it's a time where you're seeing lots of people happy and doing celebratory things and being with family and friends. And if, if you feel like some of that is lacking in your own life, it just sort of highlights that disparity a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think for people who have lost a loved one, a spouse or a family member, or had a recent breakup, yeah. all these things that can kind of, you can feel it a little more acutely at the holidays. Yeah. It's a financially stressful time for a lot of True. people and that yeah. contributes. And then in particular in Seattle, like we just don't get that much sunshine during the winter and that gray and that gray and rain can really affect people's mood. Yeah, I, I totally believe it since I just moved up here not too mm -hmm. long ago. I mean, I mean, I kind of feel it a little bit. It when, really when does it, make a difference for a lot of It does make a difference, yeah. yeah. Um, so what are the warning signs that you need to look out for if you do have a family member or a friend who, who may be going through some type of depression during the holidays? Holidays. Well, there, people feel it in different ways. So I think it's most important to think about what's the deviation from kind of the normal patterns of behavior for someone. So some people who are depressed will eat a lot more than usual. Some people will eat a lot less than usual. Some people will want to sleep all day and some people won't be able to sleep at all. But if sleep patterns or appetite or weight is having a significant deviation from your normal, that's something to really pay attention to. And then if you're feeling like or someone else is feeling like they're just not interested in the things they used to enjoy, that's a big sign that something's off. So once you see the signs, though, Though, and this is probably the hardest thing I, I would think is, you know, how do you bring it up to your loved one about mm -hmm. dealing with depression or loneliness? I mean, that's got to be a tough thing to bring up. I think it's hard, but it's so important to yeah. do it. You know, when we talk to patients that have been depressed or even suicidal, oftentimes they'll say to us, you know, if somebody had just reached out to me and wanted to talk about it, I mm -hmm. think things would have been different for me. It's not going to fix everything, but I think just acknowledging it is sort of the first important step. Yeah. So it's really important to bring it up. You can do it in a way that really normalizes it, and you can say, you know, I've often felt kind of down around the holidays. Is that something that you're dealing with at all? Because mm -hmm. um, I think people don't realize that it's so common, and they feel alone in that, and so really to help them understand that this is a really widespread phenomenon. Yeah. How do you continue the support uh, on not just past, you know, through the holidays, yeah. but continuing on until the new year, you know, for the, for the people? You know, I think if there's someone in your life that's lonely, that's lost someone or doesn't have a lot of support and resources, just frequent check-ins with that person, inviting them to do things with you or with your family, particularly around the holidays, but really all year, people want to feel included and they want to feel cared for. And so I think little touches like that can go a long way for yeah. someone. And it's, you know, it's not just noticing other people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be noticing it yourself, yeah. right? Um, and so so, like, you know, what if you do notice, you know, maybe signs of depression or loneliness in yourself? I and mean, what, 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 what should you do? I think if you're noticing significant signs of depression, like we talked about changes in appetite or sleep or disinterest in things that used to be fun for you, you should always talk to your doctor about that because they can really help you sort out, is this just kind of feeling down or is this actually depression that needs to be treated? Um, if you already have a counselor or a therapist or some kind of mental health professional in your life, that's a great place to start. But if you don't, your primary care doctor can start that conversation with you as well. Yeah. I think it's really important important for people to, you know, we talk a lot about self-care and we use that analogy of you have to put on your own oxygen mask before you can put on someone else's mm -hmm. for them. And so mm -hmm. especially at this time of year when we're all trying to take care of so many other people in our lives, we can't forget about ourselves. Yeah. Uh, also, I mean, do you, do you, do you kind of just turn off the TV? I mean, you, do you see all the images that are coming in of people, commercials, yeah. for example, having, having a great time or, I mean, what do you, what do you do in that situation? I think sometimes limiting social media exposure in particular yeah. can actually be helpful because there is a lot of comparison that people do. And yeah. if you feel like you're you're not measuring up somehow, that's a blow for people. I think yeah. it's hard. Um, you know, we've talked about this here before that actually volunteering for others is something that can make you feel a lot better about mm -hmm. your own life and your situation. Yeah. So giving back to other people that are less fortunate than you can actually make you feel like things aren't so bad. And I kind of, you know, there's a lot of positives in my life that I maybe wasn't recognizing. All right. Great points. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Elizabeth Mead, for joining us. It's also important to point out here if those feelings of loneliness or depression become more severe and you or someone you know is contemplating suicide, be be sure to talk to your doctor. Please know that you can always call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the number you see on your screen.